In this video, we'll be looking at the 2015 AP Stats free response question number five. Skipping over the question, assuming you've read that, I'm looking at part A. Based on the scatter plot, describe the relationship between arm span and height. Well, when we're describing bivariate data, we want to, to hit these things. D, direction. F, form. And S, strength. You may have heard the acronym DOFS, D-O-F-S. Oh, sometimes people talk about outliers. These are the big three, direction, form, and strength. So, in this case, the direction is clearly positive, okay? Form, it is a linear form. Not that it's directly in a straight line, but it's certainly not a, a curved type pattern. And strength, this is a moderate, maybe even strong, okay? So, the scatter plot shows a Moderate, and if you said strong, I'd be okay with that. Positive. Linear trend. Okay. In this case, contextually, it means as the height increases, the arm span increases. That is, as height increases, arm span tends to increase. All right. B. B asks us to analyze um, these two graphs. This one, graph one is our regression line, is graphed here. And graph two simply graphs the, the equation y equals x. Okay, here's our regression model, least square regression line. Here's the line y equals x. We are then asked to describe each person in this scatter plot based on these criteria. Are they square? That is, arm span equal to height. Are they a tall rectangle? Arm span is less than the height. Or are they a short re rectangle? Arm span is greater than the height. For which graph, one or two, is the line helpful in classifying a student's body shape as square, tall, rectangle, or short rectangle? Well, I hope you can imagine that y equals x, where y is the arm span and x is the height. If these two things were equal, that person would be classified as a square. That is, their arm span is equal to the height. So this line would be very helpful in this classification. So B, I, B, I, the graph, Y equals X, would be better. Since Y is the arm span and X is the height, values 
on y equal x would be classified as squared. points above y equals x would satisfy the inequality y greater than x And so you can see if y is greater than x, then that would be the arm span is greater than the height. Thus, they would represent short rectangles. And that, that description sort of makes sense if you think about it. Lastly, points below the line would be tall rectangles. All right. Part two it says complete the table of the classification for the 12 seniors. Well, if they're on the line, they're a square. Well, points on this line, one, two, three of them. There are three directly on the line. Tall. Tall rectangles, our arm span is less than the height. Arm span less than the height, those are going to be the points below the line. All right, you can see this, this point here is a height of 62, but an arm span of 61. So one, two, three, four. And then the short rectangles would be the rest. So that's seven, so there must be five left over. Should be five points above. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. All right, C part. Using the best model for prediction, calculate the predicted arm span for a senior with height of 61 inches. Well, our model for prediction is our um, Y hat, all right? And that Y hat is 11.74. plus 0.8247x, all right? So y hat is going to approximately be 11.74, it's gonna exactly be plus 0.8247 times our particular x, which is 61. And so this is roughly 62.05 and this is inches, okay? So our predicted height for a person, our predicted arm span for a person would be 62.05 inches. This is the predicted arm span. All right. That concludes question number five.